are coming up on the halfway point of the storyline with Robin number eight and Catwoman number 12. Uh, Robin number eight has story by Chuck Dixon, pencils by Tom Grummet, finishes by Ray Crissing, color by Adrian Roy, and letters by Albert de Guzman. And Catwoman number 12 has story by Joe Duffy, but script by Chuck Dixon, pencils by Jim Ballant, inks by Rick Burchett, colors by Buzz Setzer, and lettering by Bob Pinaha. Both are edited by Jordan B. Gorfinkel and the legendary Denny O'Neill. Robin number eight opens with Nightwing and Robin berating Bruce for killing until Lady Shiva shows up to gloat over finally having gotten Bruce to cross that line before she takes the mask and the tracking device she planted in it and leaves. At what point when she's gone, Bruce reveals that he hasn't killed the guy, made it look like he had, though if they don't get him to hospital soon, it'll be a moot point. At the harbor, GCPD is surveying the aftermath of Azrael's battle when they pull the powered armored guy out of the harbor. He's still alive too. Neither one has committed actual active acts of murder. Yay, team. Elsewhere, a Mr. Selkirk, presumably the man behind the arms trafficking operation, gets a call from one of his backers telling him that he needs to resolve this. And at an abandoned theater, Lady Shiva meets with all the remaining ninja from um, the Armless Master, who are waiting for their boss, and leaves the Bat Tengu mask. Well, also after killing them, of course, because it's Lady Shiva. She's not going to leave a rival alive. They just crazy talk. On the GCP side, the Gordons suspect that this is all building up to something. Not quite sure what. However, finally, in Black Gate, the imprisoned Arkham escapees are restless, and Bane regains lucidity and says, He has returned. As the issue ends with Bruce Wayne in the bat suit, in the bat cave, descending into Harold's hideout. Cat Room in number 12 opens, where, after five issues of teasing, or I think six issues, um, no, no, five issues carrying last time, of Bruce going to the rooftop parapet and then backing away, this time Batman leaps. He makes the swing successfully, making it clear to the reader that truly Batman is back. Elsewhere in Gotham, Catwoman is also investigating the same gun running operation that Azrael's working on, only for the loaded for bear guards who are expecting Azrael because he's been ripping through everything like a hot knife through butter to knock her out. Though she does get Selkirk's name first. Elsewhere, Azrael is driving the Batmobile through Gotham streets like Kurgan through New York in Highlander, causing a slew of traffic accidents in his wake, hopefully non-lethal, as he obsesses over Leha. Catwoman breaks free of her bonds just as Azrael bursts into the building, and the two, on their own separate routes, make their way through the building. Catwoman makes a more stealthy route, expedited by the fact that Azrael's basically drawing all the aggro due to him going in with a one-man army approach. Azrael is hunting for Leha, who, again, as far as we know, is probably dead, but we don't have confirmation, and Catwoman is looking for a cybernetic controller to help her paraplegic friend. They both reap the top. Azrael splattered with blood from all, all the goons that he's carved up with his claws. Um, and he's quickly distracted by Skel from Skelkirk by one of his goons. One of Selkirk's goons who worked for Leha and helped kill Jean-Paul's father. And he's only then stopped by killing that from killing that goon outright by the arrival of Batman, Robin, and Nightwing as the issue ends. Great build up to the crap finally hitting the fan of these issues. I think of the two, I kind of like the fact that Batman taking the leap happens in the Catwoman issue. Lena Kyle has been a part of the Bat book since the 1940s. Actually, honestly, possibly longer than Robin himself is. I think he actually predates the 40s. And back when she was just called the Cat and was doing her um, burglaries in a in an ankle lake length dress um and so if this moment isn't going to happen in batman and detective comics not happening in the book that bears the character's name or the book where the character first appeared honestly catwoman's book feels like the right place for it i also appreciate the reveal that asriel actually hasn't killed anyone 
uh, didn't kill anyone last issue. Thus far, the deaths have been as hands have been through deliberate inaction rather than deliberate action. And that's an important difference. If Paul actually, if Jean Paul actually did kill someone, then it's harder to have an ending at the end to come out of this in a situation where we don't have Jean Paul going into custody or perhaps even taking his own life. Um, with him going to custody, <clears throat> having the tricky issues of he's a guy who knows who Batman is who's now in prison. So that situation, unless you also don't have this end with him losing his memory or psych psyche breaking because of the system or that sort of thing. Um, so I like to have this option where we can have a theoretical route coming out of this, which ultimately they end up taking of Jean Paul beast becoming a hero again as Asriel after leaving the mantle of the bat behind. Next time, John Paul and Bruce finally has fight. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please like and subscribe. And also consider backing my Patreon. Patreon backers get episodes up to one week early of this show and any future Let's Plays. Also, please consider backing my coffee. Uh, toss me a few bucks also helps support the show, and it's not a monthly obligation or anything like that. 